walk into the vision, amen, by His grace. So we can all stand to our feet at this time, amen. We're going to read John 4, very familiar chapter, a passage of Scripture. This is where uh, uh, Jesus is talking to the woman of the wealth, amen. But I want you to notice something. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. Oh, it's very small, but that's fine. Brother, go to the next quote. I want to just read a quote, and then we're going to come back here. Amen. Next one. Amen. Here it is. And I do apologize. I see I'm conflicting with the background. But uh, you can listen to what I've said. But I want you just to see what the prophet says here. And then we're going to go back and read the scripture. And I want you to follow the same sequence. Okay. So it says here, As I have said, there's three elements that people dwell in. Three elements you dwell in. The first one is humanistic. We down here, we say, well, I'll pray for that person. I'm hoping they will get well. Okay, so you get it. It's not true faith. You don't have true faith. But you trust and you hope. You just hope. I hope. And I've seen the person suffering. I don't want to see them suffering. So I hope they'll get well. I'm going to pray for them. But to be honest, you don't have real faith. Or you don't have a revelation of it. You're just hoping. Okay, so we're on the same page. Then he says, yeah, the next is... Divine revelation. Okay. That's when something down in your heart anchors it and says it's going to happen, then something is going to happen. Okay. So it's another level higher. The revelation part that you know it is. You don't have anything proof, but in this heart it says it's going to happen. Amen. But there's a third element where we dwell. And this is where we need to get to as the bride of Christ. Listen here. Then the third element is vision or the word of the Lord made manifest. Amen. When you see that, it's thus saith the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's another thing. It's, it's, it's the word of God. It can't fail. It's black and white from God Himself. And it can no, no, there's no way for it to fail. It's impossible. A vision, it's seen something in the future that is fact. So it hasn't happened yet. It's coming in the future and it's fact. But it hasn't manifest, uh, manifested itself yet. But we want to get to the vision. I believe that. Amen. We want to get to the vision. Not just know about it, but walk into it. Amen. So let's go back to the scripture. Sorry. So John 4.10. And uh, follow me, because remember there's these three things, humanistic, revelation, and vision. You're going to see all three come out in the story with the woman at the well. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Look here, very human. In her answer, very humanistic. Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Very carnal, very humanistic. Doesn't understand what God is saying here, Christ on earth. Amen. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave up the well and drank there of himself and his children and his cattle? Very humanistic, not understanding. You don't have something to get the water out of. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. See, Jesus doesn't give up in our human state. When we come in a humanistic realm, He doesn't give up on you. Amen. He keeps working. He keeps getting you further down the road. Hallelujah. So He says here, But whosoever drinketh of the water, so He's giving it a bit more, that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Amen. And we know that was the Holy Spirit that also came down. Hallelujah. In the upper room on the day of Pentecost. It is still here today. Now look here. Yeah, the woman is still humanistic. Because she still says yeah. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. So she's not getting it. She's like, yo, give me this water, then I'll never thirst again. <laughs> she's not getting it. Very humanistic. Jesus doesn't give up. Praise the Lord. He keeps working. Jesus said unto her, 
Go call thy husband and come hither. As you know, the prophet said, he contacted her spirit. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast said, Well, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidest thou truly. Now, the woman has had some understanding. She knows some things. Because when this happens and she sees the sign, she says, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. She has an understanding and a revelation of what a prophet is. So when it comes, she recognizes it and says, Oh, I perceive you are a prophet. She's now moving into a realm of revelation. Amen. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, and when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not. We worship what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh us to worship Him. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Look, the woman, as I said, has moved into another realm. She's recognizing something. And she says this, the woman said that to her, him, sorry, I know that Messiah cometh. She had a revelation. Messiah was coming. She says, I know, which is called Christ. She also identifies who the Messiah will be. When he is come, he will tell us all these things. She has moved into the realm of revelation. Do you see that? She's caught something. Something is going on inside of her. Amen. But I want you to notice it. That when Jesus drops the anchor in her heart, Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Just skip 27. I want you to go straight to 28. Look what happened to the woman. She now moves from revelation into action. <laughs> the woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and said to the men, Come, see a man which told me all these things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Amen. Hallelujah. Can you see how it moved from just understanding to action? And we in this day must move from understanding things, understanding the message, understanding the prophet, to you moving into action. Amen. Because that is our vision. The spirit and the bride say come. What's for the world will hear directly from God through his bride. That's quotes. <laughs> Amen. Let's pray and we'll move on further by His grace. Amen. Heavenly Father, we say thank you for your word. May you just be glorified in it. May you be lifted up. Lord, may you open the hearts of the people that we may see and understand clearly what your desire is for us in this age. We ask these verses in your precious name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. It's so beautiful when you can see how the scriptures, amen, these little nuggets, and you can read over it for years, years. And suddenly when the Lord comes on the scene, it opens like a beautiful story. Amen. So it's so wonderful to see how God moved with a lady, I believe a type of us, the bride, amen, in this age, lost in our misunderstanding, lost in our ways. But God in His grace came, amen, and He met you. And many of us, when we first came to the Lord, very humanistic, amen. very simple in the way we saw things. Couldn't figure many things. Why are you doing this? Why are you dressed like that? Why don't you do that? Humanistic. And then one day we catch the revelation of it, and it's like, oh, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> I should have done it from the word go. So you see, the Lord understands that. And then He's not only wanting to dress you right, He wants you to live in what is right. Amen. Which is His Word. So, you know, what is the message? What, what, what is the beautiful thing about it? Well, the beautiful thing about the message is that it was prophesied that in the last day, 
and are we in the last day? Can I have some agreement in the house? Amen. Amen. We in the last day. If you don't believe it, go read the news a little bit. If you don't believe it, go see what's happening out there. It's a war zone. Both naturally and spiritually, it's a war zone. Yeah. We are at the end times, brothers and sisters. There's no clearer evidence that we need. Amen. Yeah. And it was prophesied at the end time, scripturally speaking, yeah. that Christ would once again come down and return unto us. Yeah. That the Son of Man, now Son of Man is prophetic, amen. Yeah. So Son of Man, we know Christ when He was on earth, He was regarded as Son of Man, as a prophet. A little bit of teaching here, amen. I know you're well taught, but let me just once again reaffirm it. Son of Man. Then Christ dies, as we know, He gets the keys of hell and the grave, and then He ascended back to heaven to sit on the throne. We know that, amen. amen. And then from Son of Man, He became Son of God. And then in the millennium, He's going to become Son of David, because remember, what does Son of David mean? Ru kingship. Ruling as king, and we will be ruling with Him as his bride. Amen. But the scripture said that in between son of God and son of David, there'll come a small time when he will return again as son of man. Amen. 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 There's going to be a time in history when he will come back as son of man. Hallelujah. Now we might say, where's Christ? I don't see him. Well, guess what? I'm looking at Christ. <laughs> I'm looking at Christ. Christ is now veiled behind the human flesh. Not one Christ, multiple Christs, veiling Christ himself. Now that could be hard to understand sometimes. To think, why would that be? Well, it's how he's going to get us to our vision. How he's going to get us to maturity. How he's going to get us to the place we need to be. Because he must come down. Amen. Whenever there's an extreme event that happens on earth, do you know what? God himself comes down. He doesn't send an angel. He says, no, I will go. There was a time in the old days, as we know, that there was a, a big uh, uh, idol built. And that everyone had to bow down. Amen. But there was three that refused to bow down. As you know, Meshach, uh, uh, Abednego, and uh, Shadrach. Have I got that right? <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Amen. And as we know, like the story goes, that as the, the fire was heated seven times more, and believe me, in this Laodicean age, the fire is seven times more. Amen. We live in extreme times, brothers and sisters. And in that moment, Christ, God sitting on his throne, he says, wait, Gabriel, wait, uh, Wormwood, you all wait. I am going down to meet those three in the fire. Amen. And when there's something important that must happen, God says, no, no, I will go down. And in this day of intense heat, <laughs> Of this Laodicean age, God said, I will return at this stage. Amen. Amen. And as we know, Revelation 10, 1 to 7, we love quoting it. The Son of Man coming down to a Son of Man, a prophet, which I believe we all know as the prophet William Branham, received the word, unveiled the word. But now, that a Son of Man has left. But the Son of Man is still here. He hasn't gone. He's still here. And the Son of Man that gave the book to a Son of Man says in Revelation 10, 8, he turns to John, John who is the type of you, the bride, and he says, John, you now take the book and eat it, and it will be sweet in your mouth and, and bitter in your belly. And that's, that's the truth because we, we sit here and our hearts are burning and we love the Word. It's like it's like honey in our mouth. It's beautiful. We love it. But we know that the reality of living a Christian life, going out there and being tested, can be bitter in the belly. And obviously Satan is against this truth. He's against these whole things. So yeah, Christ is back with us. I hope we all believe that. We, we're going to go in the rapture still, yes, but he is like the fourth man in the fire with you now, his bride. Amen. 
being with you. Not only that, he's impregnated you with his word. Amen. He, he, is, he is by your side. He is leading you. He's guiding you. You can't fail, church. It's impossible. You cannot fail because he is here. Amen. If he is here, there's no failure in him. So you just need to get under his wing. Get under his, his tent. Just let him over, overshadow you. Get yourself out of the way by the other grace. Amen. And what is he trying to do now? This is such a critical stage of the ministry. Because what is he trying to do? He's trying to shape people to get the character of Christ. Because remember, you're going to rule and reign with him. Remember, you are the bride. You're not going to get judged on the other side. You're getting judged now. When you go on the other side, you stand with Christ judging. Amen. So he needs to get you the character now so you can rule and reign with him. Amen. So yes, this time is such a critical stage. You are being molded. You will be shaped into his image. And beginning character takes time. Character is not a gift. You don't just get it. You don't just say, yes, character, enjoy. No, 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 no. Character is building, is molding. It takes time. It's a process. It's a victory like the prophet says. Character is a victory. And you're going to have to go through some things to get that character. But to remember the bigger picture, where are we heading? We're heading to rule and reign with Him. Amen. We're getting to rule and reign with Him. And to rule and reign, let's get His character. Amen. Now, character is something that's hard. <laughs> it's not easy. Let me give you an example. If God wanted to, for example, get maybe patience out of you, or let's just say He wanted to get long suffering out of you or some element of God he wants out of you he's more interested in finding a way for you to get it than sometimes giving you what you would call the basic excuse me needs of a bride member so let's just say this we know healing is the children's bread you can get your healing amen from Christ it's part of his Gifts is part of what he has promised. He died on the cross by his stripes. We are healed. Amen. Now that's said, am I right? But what if God wanted to get something character out of you? And he put, and he, not only put, but he allowed a, 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 a sickness upon your life so that you could get desperate before him and lay before him in, 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 in faith. And in patience and in long suffering. Yep. He will do that now. We are at that stage where he's building character. Yep. And you'll sort of let something lie in your life for years until you can get that character element out of you. Now that's harsh sometimes to swallow. Because, Lord, why would this thing be here? Why am I still in my condition? It's been years I've been praying for it. Why has nothing changed? Yeah. Well, guess what? He's trying to get character out of you. Yeah. To them, so that you can show forth. Because you know, what is true character? Man. True character is when you can pray for something, believe something, and maybe not get it, but still believe the promise irrespective. Of your results. <laughs> that's hard to swallow. Let's be honest, it's hard to swallow. But that's character. You see, real character believes in something even when there's no results. Ooh. If you can believe in something and you see even no results. Do you know there's a. We love as measures people to, to talk about Sister Hattie Wright. We know about, which was in the room, and that incredible power of the third pool came. He said, the Rev said to, you know, what, what would you like? Uh, you poor, would you like a million dollars in your bank account? Here's your sister, you know, you want her to be healed. Here, 
you know, he gave some options. But she at first didn't actually know quite what to ask. But then something inside of her said, wait a second, I've got two boys here that need salvation. And he said, I, I, I want the salvation of my two boys. Now what is better? Let's be honest, long term. Let's think, let's think long term. Let's think what's of value. Salvation of someone for eternity or healing of someone for a few years before they pass away. What is of more value? Salvation. Amen. She recognized what's valuable. But let's not forget our dear sister Edith, who was sister, had to write sister. Sister Edith was an invalid. Her whole life. Whole life, invalid. She went through those prayer lines that the prophet had. You've heard and heard, you've heard and even seen the power of those prayer lines. People getting up. Eyes growing that were not there. People that couldn't speak, speaking. Incredible miracles. Imagine you hear your sister Edith write. You may be number five in the row of the prayer line. You come, the four people in front of you get healed. Then you come to the prophet, he prays for you. You don't get up, nothing happens. And then the, maybe the prophet says something like, well, just go believe me and, and confess it. And you say, that's fine, I'm going to go do that. Then as you're going down the other side of the, the, uh, the platform, there you're hearing how the other five behind you got healed. But not me. Not me. Amen. How would that make you feel, brothers and sisters? Yes, be honest. How would it make you feel? It would be harsh. It would be hard. And you'd be asking, why, Lord? Why? I don't understand. Why? But Brother Bram says something so amazing. You know, Brother Bram has such a soft spot for Sister Edith Wright. It's the only time I've ever heard him sing Happy Birthday in the church for Sister Edith Wright. He gets everyone to say, let's sing Happy Birthday for the Sister Edith Wright. Because he understood her burden. But he says something so powerful. He says at one stage, he says, now Sister Edith Wright has been through many things. And she remained a cripple her whole life. Her whole life. But he says something amazing. He says, but one day she became happy in her condition. Oh, yo, that is character. That is someone you can put your back behind and say, this person has character. That irrespective of their situation, they still stood up and did what was right. That's character. That's someone you support. That's someone you put your, your shoulder behind. Because it shows that irrespective, they're not going to let things stop them. They're going to be happy no matter what. They find their lot at the moment. They say, praise God, even though I find myself in this condition, irrespective, I will serve Him. I will go forward. Hey, brothers and sisters. Character. God wants to see character out of us. So understand where we are. We've been molded into his image to rule and reign. God, once again, wants to see some types coming out Amen. to walk in the vision of what we are meant to be. Amen. Yes, Let's go to that, that the, the quote. Amen. No, actually, it's a, it's a scripture. Let's go to Matthew 17. I think we'll display it. Amen. That's much better. It's got the white background. Thank you, brothers, if you change that over. Amen. So, what is walking in the vision? Amen. It's because you come to a place of maturity. You come to a place where you can handle what God gives you. Adoption, maturity, perfection, all of these things tied in together. Now I want you to show you something which is amazing. This is now when Christ got adopted on Mount Transfiguration. This was Christ's adoption. Look what it says here, Matthew 17, 1-9. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with them. And then answered Peter and said unto the Lord, It is good for us to be here, if thy will 
let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. Amen. Peter was very humanistic at this stage, not understanding what is happening. But look here, while he gets back, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased to dwell. Hear ye him. Amen. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. Now Jesus has just been adopted. Amen. This is on transfiguration. And look what he says here. And as they were came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them saying, Tell the vision. <laughs> Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. Amen. Did it literally happen? Yes, it literally happened. It was a vision of God's adoption and perfection coming into place. Amen. Tell the vision to no man. Oh, I don't know about you, but I want to walk in my vision. I want to come to my adoption, my placement where God can use me like that. And then we, when, we, when we, men come to me, they, Christ will say, hear ye him. Hear Michael. Because this is God in flesh. Amen. Amen. Hear ye all, for this is God in flesh. Hallelujah. Amen. We must understand, brothers and sisters, it takes time for growth. We need to move with the Lord from revelation but unto a vision. Amen. By His grace. So let's just go through some of these. I just love some of these uh, quotes. They're so powerful. They just make me excited. So let's quickly move now to the next one. Uh, it, it's the one from the token. The lamb was killed in the evening time. So just to show you that there was something very special at this time. The lamb was killed in the evening time after being kept up for 14 days. And the lamb was killed and the blood was applied in the evening time. Now just to go back, with the Bible says outside the seals and other things, this for him was the highlight of his message. He said all oh, the message is building up, building up to the climax of this, the token. Now you can ask what's so big deal? Because if you can look at the essence of what the token was, it's receiving the Holy Ghost. But in the day of Pentecost, they received the Holy Ghost. But at this end time, amen, there's going to come a special pouring. A special what? Christ himself is going to come down. That token, amen. Be amongst you and then bring us to our uh, uh, perfection and adoption. And the blood was applied in that evening time. You get it? The token never come into existence until the evening time. And this is the evening time of the age that we live in. This is the evening time for the church. This is the evening time for me. This is the evening time for my message. I'm dying. I'm going. I'm moving out in the evening time of the gospel. And we've, we've come up through justification and so forth. But this is the time that the token has to be applied. Amen. This is a time when Christ himself's token in your life must be applied. Now this token is such a powerful thing. There's life under this token. Amen. There's some incredible benefits under this token. Remember, what was Christ when he was on earth? He was saving people. He was healing people. So through you, brothers and sisters, salvation can come. Healings can come. This is Christ behind you. Your flesh. Next one, my brother. I just want to go through some things, lay a little bit of foundation. The token is the word identified in you. No one else. You, brothers and sisters. Living itself out through you. That God, that's God being his own interpreter. You don't have to say, well, now you interpret my tongue. That isn't it. He interprets your life by the word. When he takes your word, no longer the Bible, no longer the prophets, your word, brothers and sisters, your word, Amen. and what you are, and identify his word through there, they don't need any interpretation, it's already there, God does his own interpretation, and we've had these promises for the day. This is a very special day, brothers and sisters, Amen. Where the end time token gets applied. Let's go to the next one. And Father, so many things can be said right here. Maybe the church wouldn't understand. But I pray that you'll give them such a crave for it, Lord. That they'll come and see we're at the end time. 
the astronaut age. I pray, Father, that you'll realize it isn't trying to condemn what they have. It's only trying to give them more. See, we're getting more now. Rapturing grace. Because he is here. He raptures, gives us the grace to rapture the faith. Well, the hour will come when we'll have to have rapture power. Not only to heal the body, but to change it in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. I'll repeat it. For the hour will come when will. Do you see that word? Will. Christ in you, but you as the vessel that will have to have rapture power. Not only to heal the body, but to change it in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Christ will be so real into your bodies till he can change it. By his great death and what he purchased, may this t- may they take this today, that token that I've spoken of last night, hold it before them and walk into this astronaut age, granted Father, with visions, powers, and worlds beyond known, and oh God, where all the great mysteries of God is unfolded in those seven seals and made known to man, granted Father. And when he came down, that's when those seven seals were made manifest. Amen. Now you might ask, well, Brother Michael, what's the deal with the token? Yeah. Well, like I said, here yeah, God is giving you something that has incredible power. Because now you are God on earth. Let's give the best type, in my opinion, there is, and that's Rahab in the Bible. Rahab. And we I don't call her Rahab the harlot. <laughs> I call her sister Rahab. Amen. Because she became the lineage of Christ. She came into that lineage of Christ. So I want you to draw your attention and let me expound a bit on this. Who applied the token? Sister Rahab. Who married the captain of the of the Israeli armies? Solomon, Sister Rahab. Who gave birth to the Kingsman Redeemer type? Boaz. Sister Rahab and Brother Solomon did. Who got in the lineage of Christ? That life lineage where Christ came out through David. Jesse, David, and so it went on through to when Christ came. Sister Rahab. Sister Rahab was of the special chosen one. She was, shall we say, God in flesh to Jericho. She was God in flesh to her family. And whoever Sister Rahab could get under her household... God saved, am I right? Everyone under Sister Rahab's household got saved. When those walls of Jericho started to rumble and go down, Sister Rahab could look at the token she applied and say, my house will stand. Sister Rahab applied the token, am I right? Over here is her family looking at Sister Rahab, trusting in Sister Rahab's revelation. That Sister Rahab, you applied the token, and if you have applied the word, then I am saved. Do you realize that power, brothers and sisters? Think about it, because you are Christ elected lady, because you are the one he has chosen, your family gets saved. Think about it. You are literally giving life to people, to your family. Because you are of that special lineage, of that special bride. You give life to others. Do you see God in flesh? Do you see God in yourself? Because of you, they get saved. They get saved, brothers and sisters. If you can apply the token, they get saved. Because of you, if I, if I was an unbeliever and had no chance of life, because you 
you are the elect lady, if I give you a glass of water, I get saved, even though I had no chance. Amen. Do you realize the power you hold? Because of you, they get life that had no chance. The Bible says in the day of judgment, remember, you're not going to be that side, you this side, like we said. On the day of judgment, they'll come and say, you'll separate the, 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 the sheep from the goats. And you'll say to the sheep, when I was thirsty, you gave me water. Yes, sir. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was hungry, you gave me food. Do you know those people actually say in the Bible, when did we do these things? They don't even remember. They just happen to come past your path along life and say, Oh, Shane, can I buy you a Coke? Yeah. Hey, you have some chips. <laughs> Enjoy. Can I get you a burger? Do you realize how valued you are? That even by someone giving you something, because you are Christ's bride, He gives them life. Wow! What power you hold, brothers and sisters. It should make you change the way you think. That when you're on the streets, that you are looking, where can I give life? Yes, they maybe will never be bride. We have to understand that. Not all is called to the bride. The bride will dwell in that city. That amazing city that will be built, the new Jerusalem. But the Bible says in the lands, there will be kingdoms and kings. And that's where those people will be saved. The ones that gave you water. You must just understand who you are. <laughs> and the power that you hold for those around you. May the Lord help us all to understand this. Let us be like Rahab. And maybe save family that had no chance. But I applied the token so they can be saved. So mother... Father, stop worried about your child. Amen. Stop worried about their loved one. You apply the token, guarantee they will be saved. Amen. Whether they will be bride or whether they will dwell in the lands, they will be saved because of you. Don't fear. Don't worry. You apply the token and let your loved ones follow you. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? It should excite you, man. Amen. What value you hold. Let us go forward like Rahab, Sister Rahab. Amen. Let's go on to the next one. Amen. Now, this, to, to get this token, Brother Brandon shows us, you must get desperate to, to display it. You can't just go along a life like, ah, nothing matters. No, you need to be willing to find your place, to adapt, to get where you should be. We found out in James. Oh, it's more, I do apologize. But anyways, we find out in James 5, 15, that the, that the Bible said that the effect of fervent, that's desperate, effect of fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. When a righteous man, a good man, gets into travel or soul travel or travel, either one, I think travel <laughs> is a better word. Amen. Traveling in that spiritual realm, getting the last ones, travel or travel, either which one you want to call it. But when... A soul gets in desperation and travailing. An effectual, fervent prayer of a man that can show the token. It does something. <laughs> There's life behind it. Amen. Next one. Notice when the Bible said here also in James 16, 5, 16. Confessing our faults. Getting right. Making ready for it. Confess our faults one to another. Having no faults. Ask people to pray for you. Confessing our faults one to another and praying one for the other. There you are with love. Love that i got confidence I can confess to you my wrong. And you can confess to me your wrong. And I love you well enough that I'll pray for you and you pray for me. And we'll stay with it with effectual fervent prayer until it's answered. That's desperation. That's what we should have all the time. You know what's sad, brothers and sisters, what I've seen in a message? We become unfaithful brothers and sisters to one another. If I come to my brother and I say, brother, man, I'm struggling. 
Hey, I'm in a uh, console watching series. <laughs> it's just like, I'm giving it all. I don't worry, I don't struggle watching series. <laughs> but I don't mind, even if it was true. I should be open enough with my brother to say, hey, I'm struggling. I'm not giving God enough time. Yeah, I'm one o'clock in the morning. I'm like, ah. You know, they're very clever these days with series. They, they finish that last episode where they call it cliffhanger. It's left suspended. And you, you wonder, what happened now? Hey, I want to know what's, what's happening with you next. You're into the next episode. <laughs> and then you know you have to work tomorrow and you've given no time to God. Nothing. Yeah, the devil knows how to entrap us. But let's just say that was my problem. And I went to my brother and said, Brother, pray for me. I just want to spend more time with God, but I find myself watching these series. Pray for me that, that, that the Lord will help me. Brothers and sisters, we should be able to keep that with us and tell no one else. But you know what's happened? Hey, did you hear? Hey, that brother, he's got a serious problem. He's got a serious, serious problem. <laughs> did you hear? Hey, he's a preacher also. How? How can that now? Come on. We become unfaithful. Like that quote says, we should have confidence. To confess our faults one to another and know that you're going to pray for me that you're going to be there for me that when the times are tough you'll be by my side that i can call you or message you and say brother pray for me sister pray for me i'm struggling and i can get on my knees and intercede for you that's true character that's the true nature of christ we need to stop this tongue talking one of the things God despises, he hates, is an idle tongue that talks about everyone else's business. Brothers and sisters, we need to slay that devil. Because we need confidence. Who is my best friend in this world besides Christ? It's my brother. Because he understands my battle. He understands the war that is raging. And he can be there for me. Say, Lord, help him. You helped me yesterday, help my brother the same way. And he can feel my burden, my struggle, and come through for me. I know that the sisters are struggling with this, how they struggle with that. Sister to sister, help each other. Be their support. Not a talker, but a kneeler in prayer. An intercessor. That's Christ's nature. And we should be doing that for one another. Amen. Let's not be unfaithful, brothers and sisters. Let's keep each other. Let's stand in the gap for each other. Next one. I believe that the reason we don't have desperation is because it's a lack of love. My brother was saying in the beginning, let's keep the love amongst us. Hey, do you know the first thing the devil attacks in the church is brotherly love and sisterly love. First thing he attacks. If you can get amongst us, little one says this, or this one is happening to me, and this, then the, the separation is starting. But if we can realize, you know what? I like to, let me give you a good example. I don't know if we have, do we have any lawyers here. <laughs> do we have any lawyers? No one in the house. Any court judges? Anyone? If I am driving down the road and due to my negligence, I hit a pedestrian. Okay. And that person gets seriously injured or maybe dies. When the court case comes up, okay, what did the damage on the person? It was the car. I'm talking about physical damage to the person. The car made that damage, am I right? The car hits them. But do we prosecute the car or do we prosecute the driver? of the car. <laughs> we prosecute the driver. Even though the damage was done by the car. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. It's not my brother, not my sister that has hurt me. It was unfortunately a spirit that got on them that did the damage. I'm not saying that we, we also, those that do the damage, we also have to say sorry. <laughs> Sometimes we unknowingly hurt people. 
And you know what? It's better to have peace and unity than to be right. Did you hear me? It's better to have peace and unity than to be right. Even if you can give a valid reason why you said and you did, if it hurts someone that it's really causing pain, say sorry. And say, I'll do my best not to do that again. You don't have to be right. You have to be more worried about healing and unity than be right. Amen. 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 So remember, we wrestle not against my brother and sister, but against devils and principalities and powers that have sometimes anointed someone. And we all be guilty of sometimes not doing right. Amen. So let's not get a high and arrogant spirit. Let's stay humble and say, Lord, I want to do my best not to hurt my brother and my sister. Amen. 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 May the Lord help us. Amen. Now, next one. Notice now, I'm trying to move quickly. I know we have communion. <laughs> Notice now, another perfect faith is a master of all circumstances. Amen. Amen. Perfect faith masters all circumstances. No matter what it is, it masters us. Now just watch, when you believe anything, do anything, when you've got faith in what you're doing, no matter what the circumstances, that don't have one thing to do with it. See, it masters that circumstance. If it's a room of sickness and the Lord's revealed that this certain thing's going to happen, you just speak it and go on. <laughs> oh, just, uh, just don't ask any questions, it's already over. Just keep going. See, it masters all circumstances. Well, if you do this, so and so is going to do. See, you see, it's already God mastered. Faith believes that God will work it out. I don't know how He's going to do it, but He'll do it anyway. See, it masters all circumstances. And faith and love is relation because you can't have faith unless you got love. Amen. Because your faith is in God, who is the very essence of love. Faith and love works together. Amen. And then he goes on to describe a young couple getting together and how there's faith one for the other. You have the ability, brothers and sisters, in this day, God is dwelling in you. When you have a family situation, if you have a work situation that is not pleasant, that is not easy, God is that perfect faith in you. You can master it. You can master that work situation. You can master that unpleasant family situation because God is in you. You can do it. You just need to let Him submit it through you. The problem is we is our will. I will show them. I will tell them. No, no, no. Your will has nothing to do with this. You need to learn to get God's will through you. Not my will, but your will be done. And believe me, that work situation, that boss that is impossible. You think to yourself, it's impossible for this situation to come right. I promise you, if you can submit to his leading and get on your knees and say, Lord, I don't know what to do anymore. I've tried everything. I've tried to be nice. I've tried to work late. I've tried to do extra this, extra that to please him or her. But nothing has changed. Lord, I need your perfect faith to master this circumstance. Lord, my husband is so unreasonable. Lord, my wife, she can't stop going here, doing this. Perfect faith can master. He can give you the wisdom to know what to do. Amen. Believe it. You hold it. It's wow. you. No one else is going to this is going to happen. It has to happen in you. God is looking for representatives of earth. It has to be you. Amen. Let's move quickly. Look at this. This is so beautiful. And the Holy Ghost is the token that the blood has been applied because it follows the blood all the way from the book of Revelation. See, that was the purpose of Him coming. Because He's here. He's coming. Amen. That's what we follow in, follow in every age. Every age He has followed that to see that it's brought forth. And that could not be made perfect without us. Amen. Wow. Think about it. Just think about it. Brother Peter, Brother Paul in the Bible. Unless you come to your perfection, your adoption, what God wants for you, and not perfection that you do nothing wrong in this flesh. Uh, coming to being submitted to Him. 
That's what God looks for. A spirit that can submit to His leading. Not my will, but your be done. And if you come to that, then you will come to what God has planned for this age. So think about it. You all read about Paul and Peter in the Bible. You think to yourself, wow. Guess what? They are waiting for you Amen. to come to your perfection. Because if you don't come to your perfection, they don't come to theirs. That's scriptural. <laughs> That's scriptural. Yes. All nature is groaning and waiting for the adoption of the sons of God. Even creation is waiting for you to come to yourself, for you to walk in the vision that God had for you. So forth. And now the entire Holy Spirit visits the church, making God, this is what I've been trying to say, making God in human flesh. As he did before Sodom, the burning day, there was a time. God came down to Abraham. God has come down to this world, but through you. Then Abraham, he appeared to him, and all the things that he, has, he hasn't done, down through the ages and the church ages, he's now doing, all through the church ages, he's now doing things he's never done before. Back to the Word, because the messages and the messages and the messages has to wind up in the entire world, Word. And in the last days, the seven seals being opened was to pick up every strength that's been left off in it and make the whole thing in one great big body of the bride. And then who live back there, here it comes again, are not perfect until this church be perfected. <laughs> wow. Wow. Do you realize you're better? Amen. Think about it. Brother Paul. Brother Paul, brother, this is the wrote most of the New Testament. It's not going to come to his perfection unless we come to ours. Whoa, what a responsibility. But we will because he is here. And he is in you. It is going to happen. <laughs> it's thus saith the Lord. The vision will be accomplished. Amen. Amen. The bride group in the last days, to them, to bring them in and all together be taken up. What a thing. Let's go on. Let's try and wrap up quickly here. The, the token is a token. It's you and Christ as persons together. See, it's the Holy Spirit, His life in you, working His own life through you. And this is a beautiful thing. It doesn't matter your status in the world sense. It's for the rich, the poor, or for whosoever will receive it. You see, it doesn't matter your status. God will use from the lowest to the highest. Amen. May He help us to see this and see it's Christ and me together. Next one. And we're not to come together to talk about the message. <laughs> We've come together to get in the message, to get in the vision. To walk in it. And the message is Christ. He is the Word. That's right. We're to get into it. Get beneath it. Not my will, but your will be done. Yes, sir. That's what we're supposed to do. Amen. May the Lord help us. Get beneath Him. Become. But the Bible uses such a beautiful term. in Christ, the mystery of God. He says, Lord, make us Love slaves. Yeah. What a word. Does it make sense? Yeah. Slave, love, how can they? No, no, but you see, you're so in love with him that you're prepared to be a slave for him. And no matter what he wants, I will be a love slave to him. Wow. He talks words, a prisoner. Be a prisoner for Christ. What is a prisoner? He doesn't have his own what he wants. No, no, you only have this time. You can get at yourself. Yeah. You only have this time you can eat. In a prison, you can't do what you want. Become a prisoner to Christ. He also shows us like an ox with the, the yoke, the, the thing on his back, that the driver can move him in the direction. The bridle, yeah, a bridle. Well, that's at least for us. That he can bridle us and make us go in the way we should go. We don't fight him. We say, yes, Lord, wherever you want me to lead, I will go. Amen, amen. Amen. We almost wrapped up. Amen. God bless you. Let's go through this last one. And Paul was a wonderful example of what Christ is looking in us. That's what Christ is looking for. Amen. 
unless God can get you a prisoner, Paul become a prisoner. See, you can't look at what you think. You can't look at what someone else thinks. You got to go just what he says do. You're a prisoner. Man, may the Lord help us to get to that. Paul knew, now this is a wonderful example. Paul knew that he was pressed in the spirit to go a certain place. When he didn't want to go. Okay? Where, or he was pressed in the spirit to go a certain place when he didn't want to go. He knew that the spirit forbid him to go certain places. He knew he had to hold his peace many times. And that's the same with us. We will want to sometimes do things, but is it God's will? Have we searched for his will? That little old fortune teller running, teller running her out after him one day, a hollering around behind him. And Paul, with that spirit of God, he wanted to rebuke it. And day after day, and finally he got a message, rebuke it. And he turned around. He couldn't do it till God said so. <laughs> he couldn't do it till God said so. See, that's a prisoner. Even when you know something is wrong, even though when you need something sorted out, that you're prepared to wait on the Lord to show you how is the best way. Oh, if the church could only be so in the glorious presence of God, someday, and this is this day, I believe, God will turn loose His power into it. Things will take place. But you can't mix your diets. See, this is our biggest challenge at the moment as Christians. We mix our diets. Now, we're still human. We have to have a little bit of time of relaxation and things like that we know. But you have to hold the balance. You can't be watching series for five hours and then praying for ten minutes and reading your Bible for five minutes. <laughs> You are going to mix the diets. We know there's the good dog in us and there's the bad dog. The one you feed the most is the one that becomes stronger. You want to feed the, the dog, the evil dog, the whole, the whole time. Well, guess what? The evil dog is going to be the one that's going to be able to win in your life. You need to find time to feed the good dog within you. Amen. Because those dogs are fighting the whole time. You will determine which one wins. We need that. You become a hybrid. The Bible talks about being double-minded because you're allowing things down in your heart. Say, say exactly what God says. Say right in the word and God will vindicate it to be the truth. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. We have such a special time. We have a time like never seen before. Amen. This is the climax of the ages. Amen. And you are a part of it. Amen. What a privilege, brothers and sisters. What a privilege to think that we could be that elect lady. Amen. And you're going to go through a journey. You're going to have your revelation. Jacob had a revelation about the birthright. Amen. But he still had to walk a long road before he got desperate. Before he wrestled all night. There's going to come a time when you're going to have to get more desperate with God. That you're going to have to be desperate enough to be able to apply the token to save others. God is looking for a church that's going to be dedicated. I know we have busy lives. We are working. Things are happening. But make time for God. And don't do it that you're scared. Oh, if I don't do it, something's going to happen. No, no, no. Do it because you love Him. You love His Word. You love to be in His presence. Get lost in prayer. <laughs> Amen. It's a wonderful experience when you're lost in prayer. When you're praying and before you, when you stop praying, you look up and you say, where did that happen? And half an hour, an hour has gone like this. It felt like five minutes and it's just been lost in prayer. Amen. Give yourself that time with God because He's here and He wants to rule from your heart because He's come back. He's in your heart. He wants to rule from you. But we've clouded over that heart. Let's get rid of 
of some of those things that have clouded us, that His light may shine through to the world. Because don't you want to save someone? Listen, I want to save someone even if they're not bride. I'll say that even if they're not bride, I want to save as many people as I can. You know, look at Abraham. When God comes to him in the tent and warns him he's going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, the spirit of a Christian says, Lord, wait, maybe there's 50. Lord, wait, wait, maybe there's 50. And then, no 50. Lord, maybe there's 40. Maybe there's 30. Maybe there's 20. Down to even there wasn't, unfortunately, 10. But what was this? Remember, Abraham was the elect of God. Am I right? Lot was unfortunately the church, not the, not the bride. He was the type of the church. But, but Abraham was concerned for the lives that was in Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes, they weren't elect like Abraham, but he wanted to save as many as he could. Don't you want to save people? Guess what? Life dwells in you. Look for opportunities. I will say this, when you see someone sick, Try get away that shyness because we'll be shy. Why don't you get away the shyness when you see someone sick? Not, a, not even a vicious person, not even from the church. Why don't you go up and say, listen, can I pray for you? Because you should be concerned for people, concerned to help them. Can I pray for you? What do you mean? No, no, I'm a Christian. I have God in me. And I believe if I lay my hands on you and pray, that the same God in me. Amen. What an honor we have at this time, brothers and sisters. The climax. You are the elite of God. The best of the best. <laughs> the best of the best reserved for this end time. I say to you, church, rise up and walk in your vision. Amen. God bless you. Amen.